Hey, Ronnie. Hey, Luke. Hey, I've been thinking outside the box lately, and I'm thinking that maybe it's time that we circle back. Uh, it was too easy with that low-hanging fruit. Mm, so we take it, in? We, we need to take it to the next level. Yeah. Uh, do you buy in on that? Yeah. I think I've empowered you. Next up <laughs> on Men Are So Smart, words and phrases you should immediately ban from your vocabulary. That's next. Here comes some facts. Seven in 10 Americans admit using what's been ranked as the most cringe-worthy phrases. That's almost 70%. It's exactly 70%, Ronnie. <laughs> Chances are you probably overheard someone in the office at one time or another say that you must give it 110%. I thought we were talking 70%. No, 30%. <laughs> Think outside the box, Ronnie, or even raise the bar. Which bar? <laughs> Hugo's? <laughs> If you're rolling your eyes, and I know I was, yeah, I was. <laughs> these overused cliches made a list of 40 of the most cringeworthy phrases said in the workplace. Uh, using too much of the worn out business jargon, in fact, can actually damage your reputation. According to a study, the less concrete and more abstract your language, the less trustworthy you appear. Jargon masks. <laughs> Jargon masks real meaning. People use it as a substitute for thinking hard and clearly about their goals and the direction that they want to give others. Now, let us be the first to admit that we're guilty as the next person for spouting many of these in regular work discourse and speaking engagements. Most of us do it without even realizing it. But it does make you it doesn't make you bad or wrong. It just makes you sound less authentic. Okay. So topping the our list is this first one, thinking outside the box. What are you doing in the box in the first place? <laughs> this useless business jargon is subconsciously spoken in general terms to express looking at solving solving problems differently. The problem? Uh-huh. It can imply that very competent and capable, capable people with less flair for creative problem solving are handicapped by the limitations of the tiny box they think they work in. <laughs> That's what I just said, huh? Which is a false per, uh, yeah. perception others may have of them. You know what? If there's a solution to a problem and it's one that's inside the box, mm -hmm. one that's we've used before, mm -hmm. how about let's start with that one? Uh, that'd be good. Yeah. Let's set the bar. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, let's circle back. Mm. How many times have you heard someone rushing to a meeting yelling down the hall, I have to jump on this conference call, but let's circle back later? That's a blow off. The use of this cringeworthy business jargon to imply checking back on something is merely lipstick on a pig. Uh, and it makes little sense if neither party actually follows up. I which, love the next one. Yeah, which nobody's going to follow up. When they say, let's circle back, they never do. Yeah. There is no circling back. No. Okay, this next one. And I use this one. Low-hanging fruit. Yeah. Uh, I was once asked by a... Not me personally. This uh, survey writer... Once asked by a former CEO to focus on the low-hanging fruit when the hiring strategy I proposed to eliminate company turnover was too ambitious and strategic. It's, it's an excuse. Yeah, they were told to come up with an easier, shorter-term Band-Aid solution to the problem. The issue with this is it literally means picking an apple hanging close to the ground rather than the harder exercise of climbing a tree. Uh, it implies that you're taking the easiest option and the path of least resistance instead of working diligently to find the best solution. Well, that only speaks to what you were talking about. You know, we already have this. Let's stay with this. Right. Rather than going, well, you know, maybe if we... Well, I know we would get... Uh, when I was a, a pop officer, which was a problem-oriented policing officer, we would get a list of people in our area that had no bail warrants. So these are people that have to go to jail. And we went through, and we ch we we used to call it cherry picking, uh -huh. but it's low hanging fruit. You pick the ones that oh I know that dude still lives there. Yeah. Oh, let's go get him first. Right. Snatch him up, take him to jail. Hour later, you're back out on the street, and yeah, you can do a few. 
the low hanging fruit is the easiest. You can always work your way up to this stuff at the top. You can climb a ladder and grab the stuff at the top later. Slow but steady wins the <laughs> yeah. race, right, Ronnie? Slow your roll. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think we should take this to the next level. Uh, this term was very popular on this list. In theory, it means to make something better. In practice, it means nothing, <laughs> mainly because nobody knows what the next level actually looks like yeah. as it can be interpreted in so many different contexts. It has become so generic that people are beginning to catch themselves before saying it out loud so as not to appear dumb or lazy. As a replacement, try delivering a clearer and more specific message about direction and making something better. Now, today on the show, we are doing a list of words and phrases you should immediately ban from your vocabulary. Are you taking notes? Because there is going to be a quiz at the end of the show. <laughs> <laughs> As usual. Yes. Yeah, this next one, buy-in. Oh, right. man. Asking for someone's buy-in says, I have an idea. I didn't involve you because I didn't value you enough to discuss it with you. I want you to embrace it as if it was uh, on you from the beginning because that would make me feel really, really good. And it's really good to feel yes. good about me. Yes. And screw the others. Oh, man. Wow. Hey, so, a uh, buy-in. You know what? I, I'll have some buy-in if it's good. Yeah. But if it's no good, I got no buy-in. Well, I'm going to throw in win-win situation in this matter. Oh. <laughs> and it really applies in that situation. <laughs> What's in it for me? There's another yes. one. Yeah. All right. And finally, our last one that made our list today, M Power. Empower carries that old school fear-based baggage. I have the power and if I deem you worthy, I will bestow some upon you. It is condescending at best and disempowering at worst. Uh, the author suggests the terms consumers and alignment be banished from the big, uh, business lexicon as well. There are so many cliches, Ronnie, that are used. Um, you know what one of my crutches is? I say, um, oh, it'll come to me. Um, shoot. Uh, anyway, sorry yeah. about that. Well, hey, this whole empower yeah. thing, uh, if you are like a, a in management and you want to give uh, subordinates a little bit more you know, a little more power, and you want to give them some responsibility, that's a different kind of empowerment. Right. I, th I right. think that a lot of people would love to take on more in their job and be more responsible. But if you're saying it as if, uh, hey, you know, it like, like they say, in a, a more condescending way, it really is. It's just not appropriate. Yeah. You know, it's funny, too, because... You, when you're talking about managers, every manager is so different. Right. And when you take one person and put them in charge of 15, you can't you can't always just have it one way because not all 15 people learn the same way right. or react the same way or work with the same work ethic mm -hmm. or they come to work every day or yeah. you know it is every person is an individual. And to try to give more responsibility to a person who can barely handle the responsibility they're given now, that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, it is indeed. Um, I, that's going to just about, I, 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 that's going to do it for us. Yeah. <laughs> we hope that yeah. you banish some of these words and phrases from your life as Number well. Number seven is I. I. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thanks for watching today. Hope you enjoyed. Maybe you even learned something. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Plus, subscribe to our channel and click the bell that you see because uh, that way you'll get notifications each time a show comes out. One of mine, I was trying to think of earlier, for all intents and purposes. Oh, yeah. I say that all the time. <laughs> I got to stop. I couldn't believe I couldn't remember it. <laughs> I drew a blank. And it's one of my crutches. It was bound to come out. <laughs> It had to. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm Lou Gallagher. I'm Corbett Ronnie. Uh, leave us a comment below. We'll get back to you. We'll see you on the next Men Are So Smart.